We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with Longhorn's head coach, Shaka Smart, and our special guest. We visited with him a few more times. We get one more opportunity to visit with him. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I can't believe that uh, he's a senior. In fact, he's in his eighth semester, uh, on track to graduate, by the way, and uh, happy to have Kerwin Roach on the show. Oh, definitely. Great to be here. Snoop, glad to have you here. I, I, I'm going to jump right in. We were talking about that social media thing. It's not like you're not active on it. I mean, <laughs> you, stay, you stay active on it, right? On, uh, mainly on Twitter, right? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I have my fair share of it. Uh, like Coach Smart said, it makes the world seem smaller, but it's also like a peer group. So it's also like keeping in contact with your peer group who was like, could be far away in Austin or in Houston, Dallas, you know, things like this. So. When, when you uh, tweet out a video, as you did before the Kansas State game, uh, asking fans, making a, an appeal to fans to come out and support the team during the game, and then it gets retweeted by Sam Ellinger, who, who said, you know, this is really cool or whatever. I mean, that, it, you, you like that when a fellow student athlete does something like that from another sport? Oh, definitely. It's always a support, a supporting cast, especially from, uh, from athlete to athlete, uh, I feel like. You know, when it was their time to shine, you know, we was always – we wouldn't even have to have to tweet it to, for everybody to come out. You know, they was always going to show up. But we just showed their support by, by being there at the game. And, uh, they just returned a favor. Snoop, how – we were talking about this before you came on. How long have you been active on social media? What, what age were you when you first started that? Uh, I think I got on Twitter like my sophomore year of high school, I want to say. And uh, I kind of fell off of it, but then senior year it came back on because it was like kind of like the thing at the time, like really the thing at the time. So, so ever since my senior year in high school, I feel like I've been on so Twitter. So you got, you got your Twitter handle when you were 15 Definitely. is what you're saying. When did you get your first cell phone? <laughs> My first cell phone, I feel, I think I was like in fourth grade. That's so when they were still flipping. Phones? Yeah, they're still flipping. <laughs> My brother had the uh, one from Family, Dollar, from Family Dollar, the track phone. So uh, we went from there. So your brother had one from Family Dollar. Yeah. They had one of those track phones. And so they did, and you got you got a flip phone. Yeah, I had the real phone. I had a real deal. He was kind of jealous. <laughs> so what, what's coming soon, Craig, is is the day when we have a guest and we say, when did you get your first so phone? And when did you first get on social media? And those answers being the exact same. Yeah. It's going to be it's going to be really close. That's that's for sure. Um, you uh, you made some um, really direct comments after the disappointment of the loss to Kansas State. Not even so much. We, we're, we're accustomed to hearing seniors use the collective term, we, we've got to do better this, we've got to, we've got to step up, we've got to play better. I've heard you say those things before, but you pointed the finger at yourself. You said, I had too many turnovers, I didn't make any threes, I've got to step up my game. And that, that sounds like a, a, a senior uh, doing that sort of thing. But, I mean, did you kind of get that feeling walking off the floor that – I, I had something to do with this as well, and, and, and there's something I, I want to be better at it myself. Oh, definitely. Um, just like any other person would do. I, after the game, I went back and looked at it. Uh, and, like, the first three minutes or five minutes of the game, I had three turnovers. It's unacceptable. And it's just all, always about taking ownership. And, like, you have seen your last year. You want to take ownership for everything you do. And uh, I just felt like I could have came out and played better the second half as I did the first half. So if I would have just put those two halves together, I feel like we wouldn't have a better uh, competition to win. It's interesting because you had 14 points in the first half, but had the turnovers in the second half, less of the turnovers, but less of the points as well. I mean, that's tough to balance out. Oh, uh, definitely. Uh, like, like I said in the press conference, you know, if I would have just made one or two shots, maybe the team would have got, you know, a better vibe, a better energy going, better juice about themselves, and maybe some more shots would have gone just collectively. But, um, you know, that's how the ball rolls. Well, one of the things, Craig, that, that we really encourage these guys, in fact, it's one of our cultural principles, is to internalize any of the experiences that we have, and particularly games, because they're value, valuable uh, data points. And, of course, the immature or, you know, less sophisticated way to go about things is when something doesn't go your way or when you have an experience to blame external factors. And it's easy and it makes you feel good in the moment, <clears throat> but it doesn't really help you get better. And Snoop has done a phenomenal job this year when he does have a game that, you know, maybe something's not at his standard or the standard that we've set for him saying, okay, I can do this better. And again, there can be a space there in between, you know, how he feels about himself as a person and the fact that he needs to do certain things better at a, as a basketball player. If, if you have that gap, it actually helps you internalize things because, you know, it's not so much that anyone wants anyone to jump off the top of the drum, you know. 
Uh, but what we want to do is have that urgency to be better, whether it's on the defensive end or taking care of the basketball. And by the way, we have another game, you know, on Saturday at noon. So that's a chance to carry over that. Is, is that a challenge? I'll get both of you thoughts on this. Is it a challenge for some players to separate the two? Like you just talked about, that space in between, is it, is it difficult? It's a challenge for all of us, Craig. I'm sure it's yep. probably a challenge for you. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, we put a lot into what we do as players mm -hmm. and as coaches. Uh, some would argue uh, that it's really – dominant as our identities you know us, you know snoop who are you well, i play basketball at texas I, you know i, I, I want to play professionally for a long time after uh, you know shaka who are you know well i'm a coach and now we have other things we have families mm -hmm. uh you know snoop's a full-time student and it just we as athletes and and you know most coaches were athletes we've learned to kind of judge and evaluate ourselves based on how we're doing on the court or on the field. And so you have to have a real presence and awareness to you to be able to separate saying, man, I need to turn the ball over less from you know how you feel about yourself as a person. Snoop, is it like that and, and uh, that you notice that among not necessarily your teammates, but people you've known over the years? And by the same token, is that a role that you as a senior and a leader of this basketball team have to take upon yourself to help some of those guys who may struggle with that a little bit to understand. Separate the person, the good person that you are, from the improvement you can make in your game as a basketball player. Oh, definitely. You know, uh, like Coach Mark said, it's, like, it's just a maturity, maturity thing, I feel like. And uh, once you internalize it and uh, accept the fact that you did, like, want to get better, it helps you get better. It motivates you to get better. It helps you turn the page quicker. And, it, and like, also, like, makes you want to go harder for the next game and, like, see the next game as a challenge to do even better. So it's definitely a gap. And uh, once I feel like once you find that gap, then you can really expand your game mentally. With uh, and, and by the way, that leads us into the fact that uh, you've got this rematch with Oklahoma State coming up. I, I remember specifically after the loss in Stillwater, you and another senior, Dylan Osadkowski, both made some really strong comments about how this team isn't together. We're not functioning together. We need to do better. Is, is that a challenge that the two of you as seniors take on to help guide them through? And, and how can this team push through that wall to be as one, to be collected as one on the floor. Oh, it's definitely a challenge, and it's something that you you know we want to do as seniors. You want to guide the whole team in the right direction, just based off your experience and based off what you want your senior season to be. And, um, as far as like pushing that wall through the challenge, you know it's not always going to be tough. It's always going to be challenges ahead. But uh, I feel like if we just stay together. You know we have one mindset, one collective mindset. And we put everything above winning. Right. There's nothing else that needs to be said. We're going to go out there and record and just play our, our bus off. All right. Uh, we're going to spend some more time here with Snoop Roach coming up. We're going to talk about some other things as well as we continue with Longhorn Weekly here from Pluckers, the West Campus location. Longhorn Weekly here, and we'll continue on Learfield IMG College in a moment. Jackson Hayes to Roach. Top of the arc against McCall May Ween. Trying to take him off the dribble. And he does. Drives right past him and scores off the glass. Like taking candy away from a baby on that. Uh, indeed it was, as uh, Kerwin Roach did that. Snoop uh, with one of those uh, drives to the hoop in the first half, 14 first half points in the ball game on Tuesday night. He's our special guest during this portion of Longhorn Weekly. I I've asked you this before, but I, I always thought you had a pretty interesting answer about it, about uh, when you feel kind of in, in a groove like that. And normally we think of guys hitting three-pointers like that. I've talked to Jace about it, and, and, and you, and, I, and, and, uh, and Courtney, uh, when he was hitting them the other night in Morgantown. Uh, do you get a similar type feeling when, when you get the ball and you're driving the way you were driving in the first half, understanding that that's there, where, whether it's a straight line drive or whether you're getting a good screen and you can go to the hole? Oh, definitely. It's always a groove, and it always kind of settles you down. I feel like after I get that first bucket, regardless of what it is, it always kind of settles me down. You know, uh, just like it makes the game kind of slower, but you definitely get in that groove. Um, I know this means a lot to you. You uh, uh, 
you, you have your degree coming up, I believe, what, what, in uh, physical culture and sports coming up? In, yes, in sir. The, uh, you're on track to graduate in May. How much did your progress toward graduation factor in your decision to come back for your senior year? Because you, you were getting feedback from, from uh, the folks with the NBA, and you considered the possibility of leaving after junior year. Uh, talk about the, the things that went into that decision as well as you being on track to graduate. Oh, uh, Just my family. Just my family is like the main decision. Uh, you know, just talking with them. They wanted to do the best thing for me. I wanted to do the best thing for me, too. And my grandma, she was like the ultimate decided fact that she was like, you're going back to school. You need to get that degree I needed to show up for a graduation date. So I was like, you know, and then she said the RLs to me, so I had to definitely come back to school and get the degree. So <laughs> what you're saying is even though you got all this feedback and, and stuff from, from NBA people, you really didn't have a choice in it because your grandma <laughs> was telling you, you make sure you go back and finish the degree, right? Basically. <laughs> uh, throughout the course of your academic career, what do you, what do you th what classes have you really enjoyed? That's, since you're on track to graduate, you're going to have a degree, so you get a chance to look back over it and think about all the classes. The one you're kind of like, "Ooh, I'm glad to get through those," and then other ones that you really liked. Um, the one one that I really really liked was the. Uh the sign language class we had took one summer. It was really eye-opening to uh, just experience a different culture, a different language. At the same time, you can't even use your mouth. So it was pretty cool. And uh, the one that I, I just was like, whoo, I got through that one was like physics. That's the hardest one ever. Like Anybody would tell you like, physics is the hardest class ever at UT. True. Now, are, are you, you said you went through sign language. Can you sign? Uh, I can sign, but just barely. I, I haven't taken it for like over two years, so I kind of fell off on it, but I would definitely love to get back into it. Do you think that also uh, going through that uh, nonverbal communication helps you as a basketball player, nonverbal communication on the floor if, it, if you're in a road environment where it's really loud and your teammates are having difficulty hearing you? Do, do you think that helps? Oh, definitely. You get a good sense from it and a, a good sense of where your player is and where your coach is at. And Coach Smart, he always tells me, like, you could tell a lot by the look on your face. And he used to always say that to me ever since I was a freshman. So it's kind of funny. But uh, you definitely get a vibe from the uh, body language. Like, your body would tell you a lot from a person where they're anxious, they're nervous, they're excited, they're ready to go or they, they're just serious and like ready to ball out so you can really tell especially from an opponent when, you go, when someone's guarding you like you know you can see them on their feet they jittery they really scared to guard you so go at them it, so is that part of your game that because of what Coach Smart told you that you feel you're still working on is your poker face <laughs> definitely yeah I gotta get more of a poker face but I feel like I'm doing better at it I, mean, I, I feel like I got more of a dog face I'm a dog how so? Now, 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 explain to me the difference now. Uh, just reckless. I feel like sometimes I can just be reckless, and sometimes you know, you know, you know, when the uh, dog gets out of place, like the owner has to put him back. That's Coach Smart. Like he has to you <laughs> check yourself, kind of. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, what do you think you've liked best about your time? Not necessarily the basketball part of it, but your time as a student athlete at UT. What do you think you've like, enjoyed the most? <clears throat> I feel like um, I enjoy just the culture and like the city of Austin. Just you know, uh, just feeling something different. You know, I come from I came from Houston. There's a whole different culture over there. Whereas keep Austin weird culture. So I, I pretty much enjoyed that and just the support system that we have. Like you have Miss Jean over there. She always be at our practice and she's like right here today. Like stuff like that. It's little but it goes a long way. Uh, it's something I never really seen growing up. Do you uh, safe to say you would like to continue your basketball career at the next level? Wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, you know. Do you kind of prepare yourself for what to look for, hoping that maybe you're drafted? If you're not drafted, you get a free agent opportunity or something like that, or even uh, even if you had to start off with the G League or overseas, you'd be good with all that? Oh, definitely. It's a process wherever you want to go, so you just got to enjoy the moment, be in the moment wherever you're at. All right. Snoop, great to see you. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. All right. It's Kerwin Roach with us. Snoop. Coming up, we'll get to some of your questions for Coach Smart when Longhorn Weekly continues here from Pluckers here on Learfield IMG College.